Welcome back to Doing Bar Things, and today we're going to talk about, uh, well, I'm thinking about making a couple of videos today. The first one, I'm going to talk about ultralights. Um, I just bought an ultralight setup, and I'm really kind of excited about it. Man, I'm sorry, guys, like, trying to get my stuff situated here. Uh, you know, welcome back to the channel in my disorganized area, whatever. Um, I went to Cabela's today, the wife of me, and we picked out a, uh, I picked out an ultralight setup. Um, spent about 250 ish on it. Um, uh, maybe 270, something like that. So it's, it's definitely not a cheap setup. You could definitely go a lot cheaper, um, for sure. So, you know, I take all of this as this was a personal choice that I made and I, I don't even, you know, I just want something a little bit nicer, a little bit higher end, uh, but you don't have to do that you know, please don't think that you have to, not at all. For something like my, my use case, and this is something to think about when you go buy, buy fishing gear, fishing gear is meant more to catch fishermen than it is fish. Like it's, it's insane how the sales and marketing and all that stuff uh, kind of go. But my use case was I wanted something that could throw little tiny lures. Um, specifically, I'll show you guys two inch gulps with a uh, 30 second ounce jig head is kind of where I was going. Maybe a 64th ounce jig head, like really small. Um, kayak catfishing, if you look him up on YouTube, he's the one who set me on, I gotta give him credit. He's the one who set me on the Berkeley Gulp two inch minnow. And you can catch damn near anything with it. Like everything bites it. I've caught big drum, like four or five pound drum on him. And I'm like, I don't understand why they're eating it. <laughs> it's like, are you just, eating this on your way to another meal? Like what is going on? Like, why would you smash that? You know, it, it's hilarious. Uh, and it gets to be a really good time because it's really light line and you're fighting, you know, sometimes a, a little bit bigger fish will come and smack it. And bass love them. Bass absolutely will crush them. I haven't caught a crappie on one yet, um, but I, I suspect a crappie will absolutely eat that. So, uh, but they're a little bitty, um, but they're just a lot of fun. Um, it's fun to be able to do like a lure. It's not just like, um, putting a piece of bread on a hook or a piece of cheese to go after a bluegill. You know, you, you actually have a lure and you can flip it out there and let it sink. And as it sinks, its tail sort of scissors down and fish love it. Like they'll go and smash it. Um, they're also in a fluid. So they smell like a prey item to these fish and, and they'll hit it. It's great. So um, I'll show you guys that. Um, we'll just go through like my plans for ultralight fishing and see maybe that helps some of you guys decide what you want to do. It's fantastic for the kids. Uh, they're little hooks. They're not really going to hurt you too bad, you know, if they're there. I mean, you obviously don't get stuck by it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but they're, you know, they're little. Your biggest problem is going to be seeing. <laughs> My problem is trying to see and tie, you know. Um, but they're very easy to use, and um, they end up just getting it done. Um, and, and you'll you'll catch fish. Um, I have given. I've gone to a dock with my kids. <laughs> Each giving them like a little fishing pole, put a put a gulp on there, um, and they just rampage down the dock and catch all the bluegill that are on the dock, uh, and bass and drum and whatever else. Like just, you know, um, it, it's it's kind of my catch all when I'm ready to catch some fish and I just want to catch something, um, and and enjoy myself uh, that way. This is my go to. So, so having a ultralight setup was important to me and it's fun and I like it um, and. I have more plans for the ultralight setup. I think it's going to be a good setup if I want to go catch a trout uh, out of a river somewhere, um, which is something I've not really done, so I, I kind of want to try that. Um, and I, I think because of the way that those fish are, this would also be a good setup. So you don't have to do what I did. You could do something different um, in this kind of style and have the same success. You don't have to go and spend. I think I spent maybe... 270 roughly uh, I'd have to add it up but like you don't have to spend that much money to have the same kind of fun is what I'm saying um, I I could do it and I wanted to so that's why I did um, still not horrible like it's not I mean I've spent I mean okay so like this reels 200 bucks <laughs> so I've spent as much as this whole combo on just a reel right uh, this is a great reel this is awesome my wife bought this for me um, but you don't have to do that to have ultralight fun. 
okay? And again, it's awesome for the kids. Like an ultralight, man, a good ultralight with uh, with these two-inch gulps, I'm telling you, like come summertime, it is it is a it is so much fun, um, but you know you you still have to remember you know this is not very this is not like using the gulps and stuff is not very targeted fishing like you're not going to catch you're going to catch a lot of bluegill and stuff like that you know most of it's going to be small stuff and again every once in a while something bigger will come along and smack it <laughs> you know and then you're like whoa what the heck is going on you know okay so. What I bought is the Thousand Series Shimano Miraville. Okay, it's a nice light uh, reel. I think this is like 120 bucks, 130 bucks, something like that. Um, it feels good. It feels quality. I don't like the handle. So the handle's kind of got this like you know, it does the collapsible thing, right? I hate collapsible handles. I just don't. There's no need for that, in my opinion. Um, so I, I personally, I would, I would have stayed away from that if it was, wasn't for the fact that this is one of the only 1000s that they had. They also had the Sedona 1000, but I think the handle was kind of the same way and it was heavier, um, noticeably heavier. So that's why I'm with the Miraville. Should be a perfectly fine reel, but, um, that's something to keep in mind. Um, I think the, um, Daiwa Fuego. LT is about 100, 110 bucks, and you could get a 1,000 of those. I think it's even lighter than this. Um, maybe that's something to check out, right? But um, seems like a good reel. Um, I think it's going to do the job that I need it to do great. Uh, pretty smooth, not as smooth as the Stratic, um, but it's smooth enough for sure, and it, it may get smoother a little bit. Sometimes these reels, uh, all, all these spinning reels, you know, you'll get them, and then when you use them a little bit, they'll they'll sort of wear in, right? They'll kind of wear in the um, the gears, and then they'll get a little bit smoother um, after using them a little bit. They'll kind of wear into their sort of steady state where they're they're smooth, you know, the smoothest. Uh, um, <clears throat> I I put eight pound test. Ultracast braid on here. Um, I think it's good. it's probably got about a hundred yards on there. That's more than enough. Remember, a hundred yards is three feet roughly, and I mean, a hundred yards is a football field. I don't think a bluegill is going to run a hundred yards. I mean, if it does, something has gone horribly wrong. Um, so I don't think something's going to spool you. Um, your, your lake is more than likely going to be less than three hundred feet deep. So you can fish on the bottom of the lake more than likely. You know, people get really like, oh, capacity, any line. It's like, I mean, I think this is good enough, right? So don't be scared to get a, a reel um, for just your freshwater fishing, which is what I'm doing with this, right? Don't be afraid to get a reel that's got, you know, capacity of around 100 yards. Like, that's totally fine. Um, you, can, uh, you can buy uh, some line and spool it. And it'll be good. Now I had I had a Cabela's spool this for me. Um, I think it spooled pretty well. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's, I think it'll be straight enough. I think it'll be straight enough. Um, and you know, it's reasonably light. Um, it feels good and rigid. You know, I don't feel too much flex anywhere, so that's good. Um, plenty, plenty for what what my use case will be. Um, I decided to pair this with a six foot nine. Where is it? What I do with it? Oh, there it is. Oops. All right. So I decided to pair it with a six foot nine St. Croix panfish. Panfish, I guess. Um, it's a six foot nine ultra light rod. Um, it is capable of, well, it's rated for a one thirty second ounce lure up to three sixteenths, which is great for what I need. Um, so I think this will work. Um, the reason why now, 
a lot of the ultralight rods are six foot long. Um, some of them are only five foot six or even five foot long, like they're very short. I needed a longer rod. Um, one of the reasons is I kayak fish, um, not all the time, um, but every once in a while I break out the kayak. And when I do, where I'm sit seated on the kayak, if I hook a fish and it runs underneath the kayak, I need to be able to clear the bow of the kayak that's out in front of me. And I need basically six foot six. As long as the rod is at least six foot six, I'm good. Um, my kayak is a Hobie Compass. If it was a bigger kayak, I might even need bigger reel, bigger rods, right? So uh, the concern I have is where it gets into storage. So really, anything over seven foot starts to get to be a bit of an issue, like in the garage or you know stored somewhere. So I try to keep my rods six foot six to seven foot long. Um, it's kind of where I where I shoot for. Um, but yeah, so ultimately, um, you don't have to spend money like I spent for this. You could run down to say Bass Pro or um, uh, your Cabela's or go online, whatever you got. Just get yourself a if, if you want to do what I'm sort of about to throw the lures I'm telling you, you know, look for an ultralight that can do 132nd or 164th ounce lures. Um, what's rated for. That's what this rating is. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can pull this up here. It's upside down. I apologize. It's the only way I can uh, it's just going to maybe there. You can see it's rated for two, two to six pound test line. Um, that's those ratings. Whenever it says that, that's always mono. So, running, um, and these are suggestions as well. Um, they do some testing, but it's not the crazy exact science every situation that you might think most of the time with rods. Um, this says two to six pound test line. That's always mono. Whenever they rate something like that, they're always talking about monofilament which is kind of a bigger diameter line than your braid for the same strength. Um, so that's why I'm totally fine with running an eight to 10 pound test braid through here. Should not be a problem. Um, yeah, so, so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of this setup, right? So the, the plan is, obviously, you know, put this in here um, and we'll use it. I think that it will be a good combo there we go, it's in the real seat, good. This would be a good combo for any panfish. Um, and that means trout, uh, well, trout are not really a panfish, but you get what I'm saying, like trout, bluegill, crappie. Um, I'll probably catch some sand bass on it. This would be, a, this would be a blast to use, uh, uh, use down the river um, with some, maybe some rooster tails or something, try to get a, a sand bass be awesome and I think we're just about that time of year so uh, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna be trying to do that uh, if I can so <clears throat> that's that setup um, oh yeah let me show you Secret weapons, folks. All right. So, you're probably wondering, all right, cool. So, what are you going to do with it? Well, these Berkeley gulps, okay, these are, uh, these are like, actually smaller than I thought they were. They're one inch, one, two inch like very lightweight they're just these little minnows okay and they're in this uh liquid which by the way once you open this it's gonna leak so don't think this is like a a watertight seal it's not okay i don't know why they 
didn't make it like they could have, but it's not. I use, <sighs> as dumb as this sounds, I use specimen cups like pea cups, uh, and I will put these in there, and those seal to keep this juice from leaking all over my other stuff. That's that's how I do it. Um, they're cheap. It works. Anyway, <clears throat> but uh, these little Berkeley gulps are great. So they catch everything. They catch all the, all the fish, right? Um, you need a jig head. I'm going to try these 132nd jig heads. Okay. Um, you might try, well, you, you should use 164ths. 164ths are the... Like those are the ones that actually work with these these gulps, but you can. But I'm gonna give the 130 seconds a try because I think it will cast decently on this rod. Um, so we'll give that a shot. That's all you need. <laughs> We're done here. Like that's all you need. Uh, you you get an ultralight reel, ultralight rod, get it spooled up, uh, put some line on it, right, uh, and. I'm going to put a leader on there probably, but the leader will be six pound test, something like that. Um, and it can even be lighter. I mean, you can go down to two pound test um, as a leader if you're really careful. And throw that on there and chunk it out and by gosh, like you'll catch, uh, you'll catch all the bluegill. Bass will come by and smash it. Uh, drum will come and smash it. That's really exciting when that happens. Um, yeah, you'll catch all the fish. You know, all the little fishies. Uh, it's great for kids. Like, it's a really good time um, for them. You know, you just go and find your find your dock, find a bridge underpass or something, you know, where, where it's safe, obviously, to go fish. Um, and you get that ultralight. You get your um, little jig heads. Get your Berkeley gulps. And then go at it. Uh, the Berkeley gulp, it doesn't really matter what color. Like, this minnow color is great. Um, you could get... They sell a chartreuse one. They sell like a white one. I don't. I haven't noticed that really matters all that much. Um, they're very small. Um, they got this little tail on them that kind of sort of scissors, uh, and that's what you need, man. And here's the thing: these don't last a long time. So you, if you put one on, you're gonna catch maybe two or three little fish before it's torn up, maybe. Um, but look at how here in the, the package, right? Like there's a lot. Okay. You can see there's quite a bit in there. This is like $6.99 or $5.99. Um, some of the little swim baits I was looking at are like $5.99 for like five. And I'm like, you know, you get more cast probably out of those, but when you have that many of these, it's, you know. So I don't know, just something maybe to try this summer and see if you can catch some fish um, and have a good time. So um, that's kind of my plan. Um, hopefully that's been insightful and kind of gives you like a really direct thing. If you're, if this is, this is, I'm telling you, this is a great thing to do if you are trying to get a kid into fishing or if you want to experiment yourself, but then have some success. I mean, you can literally just drop these things in the water, <laughs> blow a bridge and bluegill are going to kill themselves trying to get at it. They, it's, they it's really good like it's you can really have some success with it um there are some more nuanced techniques i believe you can do with it um but just to have a good time and kind of do that then then it's great i i do kind of want to try to maybe catch some more meaningful fish on my rig but if i get desperate and i need that i need that uh confidence booster that'll do it so anyway that's it for this video um i'll cut this one off I'm going to make another video and I'm going to go through, um, I think, the different kinds of rods and reels a little bit, uh, maybe to give a basics video on how certain things work. Maybe that would be uh, good. Maybe that would help some folks um, sort of looking at, because it's funny, you know, I get asked, I actually get asked questions when I start talking about fishing, like, and I say, yeah, I got a new spinning setup. And they're like, what is that? <laughs> so maybe I'll make a video and I'll try to answer some of that um, for people who have that question online. Um, that might be good. But anyway, 
All right, guys, y'all uh, take it easy, and we will see you in the next one. Please leave a like and subscribe. Um, this is some different content than the technology content that I've done in the past with computers and whatnot. I will still be doing that content. Don't think I'm not. This is just I'm having some fun with this, and it, this channel is not called tech only. It's called doing Bart things. So when Bart does things, I make a video about it once in a while. Thank you, guys. You have a great one. Like and subscribe if you would. Um, enjoy your weekend.